send you up the hill. And Dave Reef. That's right, Paul Page. Probably the best spot you could be here, overlooking all the wineries in here. And of course, Infineon Raceway right behind. A great place to get an opportunity to spend a little extra time with Matt Hagen, the man who finished number two in the world in Funny Car last year. Matt, first off, thank you for joining us. Hey, Dave. Thanks for having me on the show. Let's start by, by rewinding. You finish the year number two. You start the season off by going back to Pomona, get back to a final. It's the semifinals of the next race. And since then, it's been kind of a stretch, a bit a tough, tough stretch. Go back to Denver, you get back to the finals. Has the Dyke hard car turned the corner? You know, I don't know if there's so much of a corner to turn. It's, it's one of those deals where we have a very competitive race car. Some races you do well at and some races you don't. We obviously expected to come out here this year and uh, set the world on fire. And we've struggled a little bit, but what's nice to know is uh, we've put some stuff away for the countdown, kind of our old setup, our old tune-up. And, uh, you know, we've been kind of experimenting, you know, and it's tough to go out there and experiment and try to learn new things. Sometimes you feel like you're sacrificing races along the way. But for this diehard car, I really think that uh, it's starting to become more consistent. Tommy DeLago is feeling like he's getting a handle on this race car, and especially out here in the heat. You know, everybody knows our car is a, just a fast tune-up, cool weather car, you know what I mean? And and we struggle sometimes a little bit in the heat. Right now, we're trying to get that handle on that heat set up, and I feel like Tommy DeLago is doing a good job of that. You did do a very good job of that in Denver, Colorado, where the air was thin and, and the temperatures were high. You made it to the finals against John Force. You went 12 red in the final. Uh, nobody needs to beat you up on that, but I want you to go back, put yourself in that race car from the time the car started up to the time the red light came on. Was there anything different about the procedure? Well, yeah, absolutely. You know, you're in the final. Uh, you're not worried about lane choice. You roll the car in there, and, uh, you know, maybe I rolled it in a little bit de too deep. I mean, obviously I did, but I saw y'all do my normal deal and left on uh, what I felt was on time, and uh, I just had the car in there staged a little bit too deep, and uh, it bit me. But, you know, I think the biggest thing that I can pull from that is you can't be afraid to fail. You know, uh, and people say, well, what are you talking about, afraid to fail? Well, listen, if you're not out there going for it, trying all the time, you're not really giving your team all. You know, sometimes you get bit with it. Sometimes you're, you're the hero. You know what I mean? It's just, for me, I, I feel like that you have to be able to take that experience, learn from it, turn it into a positive. And I'm not a guy that's going to beat myself up about that. You know, I've set all the guys down. We talked about it. You know, it's no different than being a quarterback on a football team and you just do an interception. You got to get back out there, get in the grind of things and get going with it. You know, you just have to learn from it. But for me, it's, it, there's no fear of failing. It's all about winning. And and, you know, we're going to turn it into a positive. And I know Tommy DeLago is going to put a good race car under me from here on out. So I'm just I'm just excited to get back in the car. I'm glad it wasn't two weeks that we had to think about this thing. But we're, we're having fun with it. And like I said, I'm not one to beat myself up either. You know, we got a, a great uh, opportunity out here to go win some races soon. We got the final pair of Pro Stock motorcycle coming up. Then we'll continue our conversation, Paul and Mike, with Matt Hagan. Matt Hagan continuing our conversation with the red light in Denver. Now the obvious question is, is how do you put that behind you when you go up in stage in first round tomorrow? Well, Dave, you know, it's tough to put stuff behind you, so I try not to. You know, I, I want to learn from it. I want to take that experience and grow from it. You know, I think if we forget about it, it might happen to us again. So, you know, for me, I think that the biggest thing that I can do is learn from that experience, uh, go up there with, with total confidence, total motivation to, to win that race, and uh, just do what I know how to do, and that's try to turn the win light on. Anxious for that first win? Absolutely, man. I mean, we want it bad. This diehard car and the whole team, everybody's uh, trying real hard. We're going to get there. But remember, Mike and Paul, every Everybody's been telling us it's all about peaking at the right time. And if you want to start ripping off wins, what better time to do it than maybe starting now and see if you can continue that when we start the countdown of the championship. And we are definitely into that. Hey, Mike Dunn's got his five coolest cars. Countdown is coming up. Number five was the War Eagle. Four was the Sox and Martin 70 Cuda. Mike, uh, how do you become a coolest car? And what are you thinking for number three? Uh, it's all about a vibe, you know, just putting that R out there. And obviously these two cars did. And I think my number three will be a little bit of a surprise, but we'll find cool. that out when we come back to Sonoma, California.